so my name is Mari Sosa. I'm a, going to be a third year graduate student here at UCSF in the neuroscience PhD program. Um, and I'm in the lab of Dr. Lauren Frank. And we are currently in the Sandler Neurosciences Building, which is a um, almost brand new, really nice facility here at the UCSF uh, Mission Bay campus, where we do um, all kinds of research from uh, interacting with human patients on the ground floor to the um, biomedical basic science research that we do on the upper floors here. So in general, what we want to understand here is how memories are formed and how they become consolidated into long-term memories. And understanding that basic process is important for understanding how it can go wrong in disease. So people with Alzheimer's um, often have trouble recalling recently made memories and forming new memories. Um, there's a lot of cognitive decline. And so we're trying to understand how the circuit works normally so that we can understand how it goes wrong in a disease state. So I grew up in a very small town in upstate New York called Cortland. And um, my, the only reason we lived in this town was because my father was a professor at the local state college there, SUNY Cortland, and he's an anthropology professor. So I kind of grew up with a scientific inclination. You know, we watched a lot of science fiction, like documentaries, and we're always kind of thinking about the big picture. And so I definitely got interested in science early on, but I didn't um, no, I was interested in biology until high school. I just had a really good high school biology teacher. And I remember one class we had, um, some undergraduates from Cornell University came in to give a, a demonstration. And they showed us how to extract DNA from strawberries. And you could see the DNA physically. And then they had us run it through a gel. And I could, you know, just tangibly seeing that this thing that's so important to us is, you know, you can see it. It's a real molecule. And it's, um, yeah, kind of having that tangible association to it got me really interested in biology. So UCSF is it's one of the top neuroscience institutions in the country, maybe in the world. Um, but when I came here and, and interviewed, I was really struck by the kind of open collegiate atmosphere there is here. All of the students were on first name basis with the faculty. The faculty knew all the students, you know, by name and personally, and uh, that kind of really interactive friendly environment seemed great to me and I had, not every school is like that. Um, beyond that there's just incredible research here so I was really really intrigued by Dr. Frank's research and wanted to work with him and so that was a big driving factor of me coming here. Research here goes in stages so we spend several months doing an experiment like one experiment sometimes at a time and then we spend uh, a lot of time preparing so we actually do a lot of engineering and small part building here. We make all of our own equipment for the most part. And so that takes a lot of time. And then there's another section of time spent doing data analysis and a lot of coding on the computer. And so if I'm in the building part, you know, nine, 10, 12 hours a day, whatever it is, I'll spend building things. So we make um, all of our recording electrodes by hand. We make all the small parts that go into the drive that we use to record neural activity. And so that's a process of me just tinkering away at these benches and soldering things together. And then if I'm doing an experiment, uh, I usually come in in the morning, set up for the experiment, run it, record data, and then um, kind of reassess for the next day what needed to be done differently. If there's anything I need to troubleshoot, then at the end of the day, I'll troubleshoot things so that they're ready for the next day and um, you know, solve any problems that arose. And then if we're in the data analysis phase, it's just many hours on the computer um, writing our own programs in a software called MATLAB to analyze the data. And um, my research in particular with respect to reward can be applied to you know, the concept of addiction. So why does a certain extremely rewarding experience become so well reinforced that it, the person is engaged to repeat it over and over and over? We want to understand how reward makes a memory really, really strong in that way. And so we're looking at how that happens on the circuit level between the different brain areas involved. And if we can understand that, we can get a better grasp on um, how this goes wrong uh, in people who have uh, addictions or drug abuse problems. Um, our lab doesn't study that specifically, but kind of broadly, that's what it could be applied to. Um, we also do a lot of technology development here. So we're trying to develop ways to interface with neural systems and uh, decode neural activity very quickly. And that has a lot of applications for engineering and for maybe long, long in the future prosthetic memory devices that could help people with memory problems.
you know, I think there's a sort of stereotype about scientists that they're all, you know, very serious and like really hardworking and, um, you know, everyone's just focused, 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 focused all the time. And of course, we do have to be very, very focused, but, uh, you know, people in science are often a lot of fun and have a lot of other interests and uh, great personalities. And so that's part of what's great about working here in this lab, too, is that everyone's really nice and supportive and uh, we can sometimes have a lot of fun together. People are uh, very interactive and it's more about the human connection with your coworkers and colleagues than people might imagine in science. <laughs>